Which of these third shots was most effective? This one? Or this one? In this pickleball video, I'm going to show you the difference between these two third shots as well as some others. But more importantly, I'm going to answer a question that eludes most pickleball players, which is this one I've written up here. What third shot do I need to be able to hit right now? What do you need right now to play your best pickleball? Spoiler, not all third shots need to be the same. Now, here's the thing. I could stand here and share a tip or two about pickleball, but what's that really going to do for you? Instead, what I'm going to do in this video is share with you the real story about third shots that allow you to focus on the shot that you actually need right now so you can go out there and play your best pickleball. What you're going to hear me teach you in this video is going to be different than the canned information that you may hear other places, but I'm going to guarantee you this, the information in this video will actually help you play better. In this video, I'll be focusing on third shots that will get the job done for you if you're playing up to and including a 3.99 level. So if you're a 3.5 player or you're aspiring to play like a 3.5 player, then this video is specifically designed for you. We'll be exploring the use of third shots in a gold medal match at the 3.5 level at the US Open. So you know that the third shots that you're gonna see in this video work at the highest level of 3.5 play. If we haven't met before, welcome to Into Pickle. My name is Tony Roig. I am a certified master teaching professional dedicated to help pickleball players like you get the most out of your pickleball play. Together with my partner, CJ Johnson, we have the largest resource library of pickleball knowledge available anywhere in the world. You can unlock it and access these resources by joining us at betterpickleball.com. I'm going to put a link up here as well as below in the video description. To answer the question of what third shot you need right now, we need to start with the or with our preconceived notion of what a third shot drop is. When I say the term third shot drop, this is likely what you imagine. But do we all need to hit our third shots the same way that pro player Elise Jones does in this clip? in order for a third shot to be considered a good one? The answer is, for most players, no. And this is what's gonna be contrary to what you may have come into this video thinking about the third shot. The reality is that for most players, we have much more latitude in the type of third shot that we hit than we may think given all of the information that we hear about what it means to hit a third shot. It would be natural here for you to react like this. Come on, Tony. That can't be right. I've been hearing I need a third shot drop my entire pickleball existence. The answer is you do need a third shot drop. It's just not the shot that you think it is. You do not need a pro level third shot drop. If you're playing at 3-5 all the way up to 4-0, you do not need a pro player third shot drop. As I mentioned earlier in this video, the game that we're breaking down here is a 3.5 gold medal match at a major tournament. These are good players and watching their rallies proves the point that you have a lot of latitude even at the highest level of 3.5 play in your third shot drop. As we dive into the game breakdown, let me set the record straight. Number one, the third shot is important. Nothing that I'm saying here is suggesting that the third shot is not an important shot. You do need a third shot in order to play good pickable. Okay. What I am saying to you is that the third shot is not what you think it is necessarily, right? It's not limited to that and that you have greater latitude than you may have thought before you watch this video on your third shot. And the other thing that I want you to take away from this is that you want to avoid the distraction that's potential, a potential if you are so hyper-focused on having a pro-level third shot, you're distracted from other parts of the game that will give you greater benefit or greater value as you develop your play, as you work on your game. 
If you're a TPS student, a couple of extra bonuses for you here. Number one, look at the effectiveness of where the third shots are hit, who they're hit to. And number two, check out the damage that is done when there's a short return of serve. Those really hurt. Let's go ahead and look at some rallies from that 3.5 gold medal match so that you can see the latitude you have with your third shots. Not all third shots have to bounce inside the non-volley zone in order to be effective. Let's look at this first rally here and look where the third shot intercepts the opponent up at the non-volley zone. It's right around hip level. Very effective, allowing the serve team to move forward and get the job done. And this is not an outlier rally. This occurs repeatedly in this match where third shots, instead of risking the net, the player instead of risking the net with a third shot is allowing the third shot to travel deeper, intersecting the, intercepting the player around their hip, around their knee, around their thigh is gonna work perfectly fine in many 3.5 and up to 3.5 matches. You simply do not need to risk dropping your third shot into the net. You can have more latitude like here and then you move forward and you finish the rally. This is very repeated in this match, and it's an effective way of, of scoring points without risking the, taking a necessary risk with the net. This next rally, we're going to see another version of a third shot, which is a third shot drive. You don't need to run out and learn a drive, but if you happen to have a drive or can you know, power the ball across the net in a, in an, in a uh, hard fashion, this shot is very effective, particularly up to 3.5, Players have a hard time handling that sort of shot, and it results in a lot of points. Let's look at the two rallies that we started this video with. In this first rally, we're going to see a very nice third shot drop. It's an awesome third shot drop hit here. Textbook, really, pro-level pro third shot drop right there, bounces. The point of this is to show you how even hitting a really good third shot drop is not a panacea. You do not get a point for scoring a, or for hitting a successful third shot drop. What you do get a point for is for playing a tenacious rally, as in this next one, where the third shot drop is non-existent, right? It's, it's basically a third shot over the net attackable, and it, they're going to hit three balls, and they're going to end up scoring a point. But what you'll notice that the serve team does really well here, which is the team next to us, near us, is they don't rush forward on those high balls and get themselves killed. Now that we've broken down several rallies, let's look at the numbers. Let's look at the big picture of this match. So you can see clearly how it is that you have more latitude and also oftentimes don't even need any kind of a third shot drop in order to be successful as the serve team in order to score points. So in this match, it was an 11-7, 11-5 match. The total points scored in the entire match were 34. So 34 total points scored over two games in this match. Third shot drops, there were textbook. Textbook means the ones like Elise Jones hit, the ones that are beautifully clear the net, land inside the non-volley zone. There were five of those during the point scored. Sort of third shots are the ones that are around the, the belly, hip, that area. Kind of like third shot drops, but they're not pro-level third shot drops. Nine of those. So that's a total of 14 out of the 34 that involved some sort of third shot drop. By, by extension, right, by mathematics, no third shot, no third shot drop of any kind. In, on 20 out of 34 points scored, that's 59% of all of the points scored in a 3.5 gold medal match at the U.S. Open involved no third shot drop of any kind. And I can tell you, watching other matches around the same level, 3.5 and thereabouts, these numbers are not out of line. These numbers are pretty consistent. And in a minute, I'm going to explain to you where these points actually originate from. The key right now is to understand that 20 out of 34 points, or almost 60% of the points, did not involve, involve any kind of third shot drop. And on the other end, 5, which is basic, this is 15%. 15% of 34 points involved a textbook third shot drop. Showing what? That you have a lot of latitude on your third shots. And you can still be successful, including at the highest level of 3.5 play. As we dive deeper into the numbers and figure out where these points were scored or how they were scored without hitting beautiful third shot drops, consider subscribing to the channel. Here at Into Pickle, our objective is to help you 
better understand the game. We're not just about giving you a tip here, a tip there. We want to go deep with you so that you can better understand how to play this awesome game. And if you want to know more about strategy, we have an awesome Respect the X guide that you can get for free. I'm going to put a link up here and I'm going to put it down below as well. Respecting the X is a really powerful strategy you can use when you're out there playing. All right, so let's see how these 34 points were scored. And there's a concept that's really important that most players are either unaware of or don't give enough attention to, and it's this idea of gifted points. Out of the 34 points that were scored, a grand total of 18 were gifted. That's 53%. So more than half of the points were gifted points. Nine per game. Two games, nine per game on average were gifted. The gifted points are missed. Missed returns of serve. And missed volleys when you're on the return side. So fourth shots, six shots, eight shots when you're not under pressure. Miss volleys on the return side. Those are gifted points. So you can see how third shots effectiveness or the, the accuracy and, and beauty of the third shots in this game was not the deciding factor. The deciding factor in this game were gifted points, more than half gifted away. Now that you know you have more latitude with your third shots than perhaps you understood prior to watching this video, you can focus on what really matters to your advancement and greater success when you play. And that is reducing your gifted points when you're out there. I'm going to put a video here that'll help you get started with the process of reducing your gifted points, allowing you the greatest chance for success. Until we see each other next time on the next video, remember to always have fun out there.